Thank you, Anna, for the introduction. Welcome, everybody. I'm here to talk about our work on K-Split, a static analysis framework for automating device driver isolation. This is a joint work between Penn State University, University of California at Irvine, and University of Utah. The key insight from analyzing all the Linux kernel vulnerabilities from the CVE database is that 16 to 50% of all the kernel CVEs are from device driver subsystem. This is the data from the, for the past five years. And we know that isolation of kernel components is a long-standing problem. A lot of researchers have worked on it in the past, and numerous solutions have been proposed. Example, microkernels, uh, running isolated VMs, and running device drivers on top of isolated VMs, and developing kernels from scratch in a safe language. From all these past works, we know that isolation of kernel components is the key to improve the reliability of the operating system. One of the ways to achieve isolation is to run a component in a separate memory space. Then, if we run it in a separate memory space, we need to have separate object hierarchies that the isolated component access to, which means we need to maintain private copies of the object hierarchies. And in order to keep them in sync to ensure functional correctness, we need to synchronize data back and forth between these object hierarchies. This has to be done on every domain crossing. And in order to keep them in sync and to communicate between the isolated and non-isolated part, we need some glue code that takes care of marshalling and unmarshalling the parameters that are necessary for functional correctness, which are typically generated from an ideal specification, which is automatically generated from the ideal compiler. How much is the performance overhead uh, for this isolation mechanism? Historically, isolation was expensive. We have been using paging mechanism for quite a while, and which is around 800 cycles. If you put that into perspective for transmitting a network packet, which takes around 2,000 cycles, this is a prohibitive overhead. However, the recent CPU extensions are promising. For example, we have VMFunk and MPK, which are in the order of 400 cycles for VMFunk and 260 cycles for MPK. However, there are additional overheads in order to strengthen the isolation boundary, like saving and restoring general purpose and extended registers and picking a stack, et cetera. In this particular work, we use VMFunk as our isolation mechanism. But the high-level readout is the performance overhead of isolation is approaching the overheads of a syscall. However, manually specifying the IDL for data synchronization between domains has become a major challenge. Let's understand why. First, in a typical OS kernel, we are dealing with a large interface boundary. For example, here's the IXGB driver interface, which exports around 81 driver functions, exports in the sense it registers with the kernel for the kernel to call back to perform operations on this device driver. And it calls 134 different kernel functions to accomplish various tasks like PC, PCIe subsystem and network subsystem, et cetera. It is impossible to manually inspect each and every one of this call to figure out which set of fields need to be passed across the boundary for each and every call. Here's an example of one such driver exported function which is used for transmitting network packets through this device. The kernel passes an skbuf data structure that represents a network packet in the Linux kernel. To understand how complicated this data structure is, we should look at its definition. It contains around 66 fields, of which five are pointers, since we are maintaining separate object hierarchies, we shouldn't look only at those 66 fields. We should see how, how much of those 66 fields can reach, which is all the recursively reachable fields from those 66 fields, which amounts to 3,100 fields, of which 1,200 are pointers. But in reality, only a small subset of those fields are accessed by both the kernel and the driver. And for this particular API that is transmitting a network packet, we just need eight shared fields. Also, in order to infer the marshalling requirements for such a pointer, we should determine what kind of pointer it is when it is passed across a function boundary. Sorry, isolation boundary. Here, the SKB uh, is a pointer, but it could be a singleton or an array, or it contains previous and next pointers of the same data type. So it could be a recursive data structure, or it could be tied together in a linked list. And SKB, by default, has this collocated data structure, which is shaded in gray here. So we need to infer the pointer type to do, to do the appropriate marshalling of this data structure. 
There are other type of low-level kernel idioms that we need to deal with as well. For example, sized and sentinel arrays, which are used in PCI registration, special pointers for user, user space pointer and IO memory, tagged unions, returning error as a pointer, and more. Not only do we need to synchronize the data across the isolation boundary, we also need to handle synchronization of critical sections. Why? If not, we would be operating on a stale copy of data on one side. And in a modern kernel, there are many different synchronization primitives, such as mutexes, atomic operations, global logs, such as RTNL, and RCUs and sequential logs. To address these challenges, we built a set of static analysis to generate the ideal mostly automatically. We'll get to why it is mostly automatically. First, uh, we would like to isolate the complete driver, and the next goal is to identify shared and private data on a large interface boundary, like the one we talked about earlier. IXGBE has 215 interface functions, and we need to ensure each domain has the updated copy of the data structure to ensure functional correctness, of course. And we need to identify marshalling requirements for all the low-level kernel idioms, and identify atomic regions that share access data, access shared data. And one of the prior work is microdrivers. They did uh, isolate uh, the kernel. They did analyze the kernel and driver code, but they isolate only the control plane of the driver to run it in the user space. The critical path of the driver remained in the kernel for performance reasons. To achieve our goals, we need to make some practical design choices. First, the kernel is huge, so we have to identify the relevant code that the driver interacts with. And we aim to detect all the shared data, but due to the limitation of static analysis, we might classify some private data as shared and vice versa, which would result in additional synchronization overhead. While aiming to infer marshalling requirements for low-level kernel idioms, we might not be able to detect for something. For that, we will uh, issue a warning to the developer. The same for shared critical sections. But the good news is, from our analysis, there are, from, from analyzing all the device drivers, there are not that many shared critical sections. And here's how the analysis works. We take the source code of the kernel and the target driver as an input, and we perform a set of static analysis to analyze the interaction between the driver and the kernel. And based on the analysis, we generate an interface definition language specification that describes the communication and synchronization requirement for these interfaces. We then pass this on to an ideal compiler that automatically generates the glue code. First, we perform shared field analysis. What do we mean by shared fields? In the shared field analysis, we collect the set of data structure types on all the interface functions for the driver and the kernel. And then we output the set of struct fields that are accessed both by the driver and the kernel. Here's an example of a boundary crossing. Onto the, onto the right, there's the driver function that registers the network interface with the kernel by calling register netdev. To analyze this, we start at the interface boundary and do alias analysis on the kernel side and also on the driver side to figure out which fields are shared between them. In the above example, we classify hardware features and features fields as shared, whereas the wanted features, which is operated only by the kernel, as private. Though this looks trivial, there may be aliases where struct netdev is passed, passed through different functions and accessed through multiple aliases. To address that, we perform interprocedural analysis to determine the shared fields, for which we rely on program dependence graph. First, we build a PDG for the driver domain and for the kernel domain. From the PDG, we'll be able to analyze interprocedural data using field-sensitive alias analysis and infer control and data dependencies for a given variable. For more details on how PDG works, please refer to the original PDG paper from CCS17. The next step, we perform boundary data access analysis. The main idea is to infer synchronization requirements for every interface function that is on every call and return edges. How do we do it? First, we figure out the subset of shared fields that are read written in an interface function. Then we synchronize the data read by the callee at the call edge and synchronize the data updated by the callee at the return edge. Referring to our previous example, we synchronize only the fields that are accessed by the kernel during that function call edge. For example, here, hardware features and features. While returning, we synchronize back the updated fields and omit the private field that is used only by the kernel. <clears throat> 
The next step is to perform atomic region analysis. First, we find shared data accessed within the atomic regions. Once we have identified those, we perform an analysis similar to the boundary data access analysis to infer which fields are read written on either sides and infer the synchronization requirements. We synchronize the relevant fields before the entry exit point of each atomic region. To identify atomic regions, we identify all the log APA calls on the PDG. Then we use these identified log calls as the source and find the unlock APA on the control flow path. The lock will form a pair with each unlock API reachable on the control flow graph. Next, to determine whether a lock unlock pair forms a critical section, we use alias relations to check whether the call pair obtained the same lock. Finally, when it comes to inferring synchronization requirements for pointers, they are always tricky. The pointer could point to a single instance or an array of instances. When synchronizing a single instance, we just need the type information for the pointer. Whereas when you want to synchronize an array, you need the size information as well. To identify the type of pointer, we employ nest check analysis to classify pointers into three categories. Safe, which points to a single instance. Sequential, which can point to an array of instances. And wild pointers, which has a cast operation. The classification is based on the instruction applied to the pointers. For example, if a pointer has pointer arithmetic instructions applied to it, it will be considered as a sequential pointer which may point to an array. Pointers with a cast operation or wild pointers. First, it's easy to classify safe pointers because it is just pointing to a singleton. You can get the type information and marshal it correctly. For sequential pointers, we try to infer the size of the array based on the PDG. If the array size cannot be inferred statically, we generate warnings. And for wild pointers, if the casted pointer is pointed to, uh, pointed from a white pointer, then we check if it is typecasted only to one struct type other than the white pointer. If so, we can generate marshalling information from the typecasted data structure. Otherwise, the white pointer can be casted to multiple different data types. In such cases, we will issue a warning. To evaluate our framework, we try to answer the following research questions. How much data synchronization can we reduce? and how much manual work is involved for the developer in the end, and how to test the correctness of the isolated drivers. F to answer that, we perform analysis on 354 different drivers from nine different subsystems, and we fully isolate and validate the correctness of 10 different device drivers. We also compared our solution to micro drivers, and for analyzing the performance of uh, isolated solution, we run a memcached benchmark on the isolated IXGB driver. In here, we will discuss the metrics of one of the 10 drivers that we isolate and validate, which is the most complicated of all the 10 drivers, uh, IXGBE. Here we show how our analysis compared with the other approaches. If we have to do a naive deep copy of all the struct fields of the uh, hierarchical data structure, then we would end up copying over 1 million fields. Whereas micro drivers capture all the fields accessed by the driver, however, they do both the fields private to the driver as well as shared with the kernel. In our analysis, we capture only the fields that are accessed by both the domains. In that case, we would need to synchronize only 3,100 3, fields across all the functions of the IXGB driver, which is a significant reduction compared to a deep copy. Here we show the synchronization primitives that are classified either as private or shared based on our atomic region analysis. As we hypothesized earlier, we have no shared RCUs or seek logs in IHGB driver. And we correctly identified the 35 shared atomic operations and three shared critical sections for which we have to call out uh, and synchronize. From the nest check pointer classification, we handle all the singleton pointers. For sequential pointers, that is arrays, we are able to handle 75% of the cases for IHGB. For the rest, the analysis was either not able to find the allocation site or the size of the array. And we handle all but one of the wild pointers that are typecasted with void, and we emit warnings for wild pointers, others that are typecasted to multiple types that couldn't be handled. How about the manual work? For IXGB with 27,000 source lines, we generate an ideal specification of around 2,000 lines. And we misclassify seven pointers, and we issue a warning of 65 warnings to the developer, of which 33 are anonymous unions and 16 plus some change are for arrays and wild pointers. And we need to manually change uh, for all these 
array uh, size misinformation in the IDL that amounts to 53 lines of changes. And for drivers, we need to change 19 lines of code. IXGB is a complicated driver. So I think from 27,000 lines of code, we can automate it with 2,000 lines with just minimal changes is, is a huge win with, with respect to automatic analysis. However, for some other classes of drivers, there are no changes to the source code. Here we show an average amount of manual work involved across all 10 drivers that we, that we validated that is run tested. On an average, we generate 16 warnings and we misclassify two pointers, which results in 14 lines of change in the IDL and six lines of change in the original driver. And these are all average numbers. To measure the performance overhead, we ran memcached benchmark on the isolated IXGB driver using the memasLab load generator. We used 64-byte keys and 1,024-byte values with 90% set and 10% get configuration. Here we report the bandwidth and transactions per second. For one to four threads, case split overhead is around 5 to 18% compared to the isolated driver, non-isolated driver. And with 10 threads, we saturate the network bandwidth, uh, but at a, at a at an increased CPU overhead due to the additional domain crossings. For more details on the isolation performance, please refer to the original LVD's paper on how it, is, how it scales across the entire system. Also, it is more important to note that the set, set of static analysis we propose is orthogonal to the isolation mechanism. So even though if we pick a, a different, additional, different isolation mechanism, we can apply the same techniques. To conclude, after years of research, we are moving closer to the low overhead isolation mechanisms. In the future, suppose we have a magical hardware primitive that, ca that has the performance overhead of a function call, we would, still need to we would still need a framework to isolate and analyze all the interaction patterns and generate the ideal specification. With KSplit, we make a step forward in providing a static analysis framework that handles the complex interface boundary and infers synchronization with minimal manual effort. The source code is validated and is available at this artifact location. Thank you.